a short history of Nintendo Game and Watch. Game Watch. Game Watch. If you were born in the 90s, you likely aren't too familiar with Nintendo's Game and Watch line of LCD handheld gaming systems. But this series of 59 handheld games from the 80s holds a very important spot in video game history. Just in time for Mario's 35th anniversary celebration, Nintendo is releasing Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. on November 13th, featuring the classic 1985 platformer plus Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. It also features Ball, the very first Game & Watch title ever released. In fact, this is where we begin our journey through the history of Nintendo Game & Watch. There's Game & Watch, 14 in all, only from Nintendo! 1980, Ball. Ball might look a bit simplistic by today's standards, but this two-mode game was surprisingly addicting back in 1980. Game A features a stickman named Mr. Game & Watch, tossing balls in the air and attempting to catch them as the game increases speed. Meanwhile, Game B is a fast-paced take on juggling. Ball's biggest contribution to Nintendo history is Mr. Game & Watch himself, a recurring character who has appeared in several Super Smash Bros. games. 1981, Mickey Mouse. The House of Mouse is obviously no stranger to video game tie-ins, but one of the earliest examples is the 1981 Game & Watch release in which players take control of the Disney icon to catch eggs before they crack on the floor. Like Ball, this game is about speed and timing your moves just right. While Mickey himself is only depicted via two alternating images, it's still loads of fun to see him in action. Plus, Minnie Mouse appears as a cameo. 1982, Donkey Kong Jr. 1982's Game & Watch interpretation of Donkey Kong Jr. is notable for boasting a cool metallic blue faceplate. Like in the original arcade game, Donkey Kong Jr. must climb his way up a set of platforms to rescue his father, all while dodging traps set by Mario and collecting keys that will open his father's cage. I got Donkey Kong, and now I'll get you too, Junior. 1983, Pinball. 1983's Pinball is one of the highlights of Nintendo's vertical multi-screen series, the line that today can be considered the forefather of the Nintendo DS and 3DS. This particular LCD handheld featured a clasped shell design with a screen on both the top and bottom, letting players launch balls from one to the other in what is still one of the most colorful iterations of Game & Watch. 1983, Mario's Bombs Away. Yet, from a purely technical perspective, Mario's Bombs Away might be the most impressive Game & Watch system ever released. The 1983 game is simple enough, Mario moves bombs from left to right while avoiding flammable oil and enemy torches. But there's more behind this handheld than meets the eye. Mario's Bombs Away takes place at night, which necessitated some clever hardware workarounds. Essentially, the game utilizes an internal backlight in order to function, shining on a downward-facing LCD color screen that is then reflected using a mirror to make the action viewable. The unit is also aesthetically unique, looking more like a traditional arcade machine rather than a handheld device, an ingenious design to this day. 1984, Spitball Sparky. 1984's Spitball Sparky was the first entry in Game & Watch's short-lived Super Color series, which boasted a drastically different design than the other lines. The handheld featured a vertical single screen and looked more like a calculator than a gaming system, the game itself plays similarly to classic brick breakers like Breakout, as Mr. Game & Watch works to keep the ball afloat and hit tiles by continuously spitting out puffs of air. The key to success is maintaining a good rhythm in order to destroy as many rows as possible. 1985, Blackjack. The easy-to-learn card game Blackjack was translated into its own multi-screen Game & Watch system in 1985 so that players could stick or hit their weight to 21 on the go. This handheld served as a great way to make use of the console's dual screen setup, with the dealer portrayed on the upper screen while the player made his moves on the bottom screen. 1986, Super Mario Brothers. 
the original Super Mario Bros. didn't arrive on just one Game & Watch system, but several. The game was first released as part of the Crystal Screen series in 1986, and received a far superior, new widescreen version two years later. Despite being somewhat limited in what platforms the LCD screen could actually display, the Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch retains all the magic of the NES original, with eight unique worlds, mushroom power-ups, and Princess Peach's ability to appear on different tiers depending on the level. 1988 Gold Cliff Hunting for treasure has been a staple in video games almost since their inception, so it was inevitable that Nintendo would eventually release a Game & Watch handheld around this very concept. In 1988's Gold Cliff, players control an adventurer moving their way from the bottom screen to the top while clambering up platforms, timing jumps so as not to fall to their deaths. Gold Cliff is notable for being the first Game & Watch handheld to feature a continue button that allowed players to carry over the progress and restart at the point where they were killed. 1989, Zelda. Game & Watch's version of Zelda finally arrived on a multi-screen system in 1989, challenging our plucky silent hero to fight his way through many enemy-filled chambers. This game is noteworthy for pushing the boundaries of what players thought was possible on a Game & Watch system, sporting a map and inventory menu on the top screens as Link battled Moblins along the bottom. The final fight against the dragon takes place on the upper right corner, delivering a sense of scale and ambition not seen in any prior Game & Watch release. While you can still find many of these classic titles as expensive collector's items today, your best shot at getting the Game & Watch experience is by picking up Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. when it drops this November. Stay tuned for more Nintendo history and news at Den of Geek.